Hey bestie, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm gonna be following up from a video I made a couple months ago talking about uh, my very first warehouse space. So I gave you guys a tour a couple months ago and I realized that I left you hanging and I did not make a video pretty much showing you how to do this yourself. If you have a small business and you are expanding and you're looking for a warehouse space, then look no further. I'm gonna be explaining pretty much everything I know in today's video. If you have any questions as this video goes along that are unanswered, then please feel free to sound off in the comments below. And I'm gonna try my best to answer everyone's questions. And if you have a space of your own, feel free to comment as well and give any additional insight that I don't cover in today's video. Since first, if you are looking for a space, then congratulations, you are making a big step in growing your business. And it can seem like a pretty intimidating process and I felt the same way when I started as well. But today I'm gonna try to soothe that a little bit and tell you what I know. So one of the first things that you're gonna have to determine when looking for space is to figure out which space is the most functional and most needed for your business. Generally speaking, there's three different types of spaces that um, we look at. You got flex spaces, you got office spaces, and then you have pretty big just warehouse spaces. What I have here is a flex space. A portion of it is an office space and the back portion where I am right now is a warehouse space. So this is an open space where I make majority of my candles. I have a candle business, BT Dubs. Um, I'll leave a link below, shameless plug if you want to support me. And um, here I'll make my candles and stuff and then when trucks come or if I want to drop some things off we'll use the big door in the back to make um, unloading and offloading a uh, breeze. Or is that the same? I don't know. Well, anyways, you know what I mean. Then you have office spaces. The best thing I can think of to describe an office space is like um, real estate. So imagine you go into a real estate office and then there's different rooms for the different realtors that are their individual offices. That's an office space. When I speak about like office spaces in this video, I'm speaking about um, renting out the entire space of that. And then you also have the big warehouse spaces, which is pretty much like, let's think of like, if you uh, do t-shirt printing and you need the space to, to press and stuff, you don't really need the uh, individual rooms, right? Just open space and generally those do have like one or two offices. So the first step is for you to determine what is gonna be the most functional for you and what's gonna work best for you and your business. And before you even start looking at places, then I would figure that out first. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is to find an actual spot, right? So what I did was I went to loopnet.com, this is not sponsored, and um, this is pretty much like a Zillow for industrial spaces. So what you'll do is go and filter by square footage. You don't want to filter by price, is because a lot of times when they list um, individual places, they do prices per square foot or prices for each individual unit. And just for you to be able to see most of what they have, you just filter by square footage. But I mean, you could experiment with it it's so easy like you do what you do you know play with it when you finally find a place that you think you like then you pick up the phone and you call the realtor and they'll tell you some more information about that space you'll find out if it works or not but I would recommend seeing what else um, they have available to see if you can tour those as well when you call a realtor and they are listed on a property then they know of other ones that are in the area as well what I have here is a thousand square feet. I was looking for 2000 square feet at the time, but this ended up working. But this is a pretty small warehouse space. Just know it might be a little difficult to find a, a space this small if you do start looking. Then after that, you'll just continue to tour the properties. You wanna find out what their minimum lease term is with industrial leases. Most of the time they have a minimum um, term. So generally that tends to be about anywhere from two to five years i was lucky to get one year on my lease because i was in the middle of the pandemic so we were able to negotiate one year but they definitely wanted us to sign two you just figure out what that is and um just see if that works well for you before you sign anything let's say that you go through the realtor right and you tell them that you love this spot then the next step is to get your lease document. Property management from the property that you are looking to lease from is going to send over your lease. In the lease, it's going to um, tell you different terms in the lease. So you're gonna get figure out what your security deposit is. You're gonna figure out, um, you know, what your policy on your HVAC is, which I'll touch on that a little later. And it's very, very, very important. You'll find out, um, you know, just 
your utilities and different things like that and they'll have like a welcome letter with those things as well it's very important that you get a second set of eyes on that lease side of yourself to just make look through the terms and make sure that um everything makes sense and that you're okay with it i would highly recommend getting an attorney to look over it in my case my in-law is an engineer and he's done so many leases that we trusted him to do it but you just always want to make sure that my fiance is calling i gotta definitely want to get another set of eyes and make sure that you're good with the terms on that lease document because that's very important that you're going to be held to that document right so let's say the lease looks good then you're going to submit that and then boom they might also ask you for additional documents including um for you to pretty much write out what you're going to be doing in the space and it's very important for you to be transparent and tell the truth on what you're going to be doing in the space for example i make and sell candles and in the back of my warehouse i um actually pour fragrance and, and pour wax and and so sometimes you can smell it and it's pretty strong back here and so i was very transparent in my sheet which i mean there's really no reason for you to not you know tell them um but a little further down the line, I got new neighbors and they complained about the fragrance um, in the space. So then property management wanted me to install a ventilation fan in here that um, was quoted to be around 2,500, 3,000 bucks. And we were like, no way, we're not doing that. And because I was transparent and they knew what I was doing from the very beginning in the space, I didn't have to pay for it and my lease um, is ending anyways. So it's just something that we don't need to do. So needless to say that if you are going to be having a fragrance product and um, you're open to signing a longer lease term that's something that you might want to negotiate in the lease you know that basically if you're gonna stay long term and um, fragrance is a issue for any of the tenants then it would be property management responsibility to install a ventilation fan or anything of that nature right all right so so once you submit all that that documentation and they accept your lease then you will get a move-in date however when you do start looking for space you can let them know what you're looking for in terms of move-in they're pretty flexible on the move-in dates if you're looking i would say to maybe start looking about three four months before you are ready to move in and um yeah depending on your lease term you also might get like your first month free also depending on location so that's just something to to consider if you're looking for a space and also your realtor could give you better insight of what is most um common in the market that you're in i'm going to be talking a little bit more of what to expect with your lease so one of the first things i have my little notepad here so one of, one of the things that i mentioned earlier that i just want to touch base on again is the longer your lease the more things that you're able to negotiate um as i mentioned you know most properties have minimum lease terms and if you're going to sign the minimum they're probably not going to work with you that much when it comes to customizing things and such we did have to paint and um we ended up having to change a sink but i think that property management would have changed that if it wasn't functional but it was functional it was just cosmetically disgusting to us so we changed it out anyways we actually asked them if they would be willing to paint and they weren't because of how short the lease term is but if you do sign a longer uh lease term they might be able to negotiate with um painting or like flooring um and switching some things up so just keep that in mind also might be a lot harder finding a space if you're looking for a shorter lease term as well another thing to expect and to know is that leases are nothing like apartment leases um especially if you are doing a short lease term you know when you walk into a, a brand new apartment you want to see everything spick and span and if it's not you're out what you want to get fixed before you move in right and they'll fix it for you because they want you to take that lease it's not like that here so um if you're gonna sign a shorter lease term expect to clean up when you come in and, and do things like that but most property management groups are good about that and will clean up for you mine was not and also like these um warehouse buildings for the most part are older buildings that require a lot of maintenance and stuff like that so you want to make sure that you bring up any maintenance issues like the week you move in if not the second you find out about it when it comes to maintenance something that I mentioned a little earlier that is extremely important if you don't take anything from this video know this know what is going on with your HVAC system more specifically know who is responsible for fixing it if it goes out right and you want to make sure that it's not you okay so at least it says that if we get the HVAC system looked at every three months in the case that it falls out then we are not responsible for fixing anything so every three months we have the service group come and look at the HVAC it's $150 every three months and they come and just make sure everything is functional they pretty much just go on the roof and like do their thing I don't really know exactly what they do but I have a document that says that they were here and and um it's 
uh, updated every three months. And the reason why these HVAC systems are, are thousands and thousands of dollars, like tens of thousands of dollars if they go out. And of course, we don't want to pay for that. And these buildings aren't are old you know so it's like you don't want to mess with that just make sure that you pay for that and just get it done don't play with that another thing to expect is like with the big warehouse spaces and flex spaces in the back area it's it's very difficult to find a place that has it air conditioned mine is not so i tend to keep the door cracked so that some air would flow in the back and it's gruesome in the summer however i do have a friend that also sells candles and she was able to find a space that was um, air conditioned in the back so if that is something that is a non-negotiable for you then make sure that you um know if it's air conditioned or not or if you know there's any chance of them installing that for you last thing i'm going to touch on is pricing so this is definitely going to change based off of where you are so i guess take it with a grain of salt but um i'm in the north carolina market so for my space it's a thousand square feet i pay 1350 a month and that includes my camp fees which is a non-negotiable maintenance fee that you have to pay and that's for them to cut the grass uh and they air leaf blow and sometimes i see them and yeah that's just something i gotta pay for i think that in itself is like 150 but it doesn't matter really you gotta pay for it any damn way so any other questions feel free to sound off in the comments below i'm gonna try my best to answer everyone's questions well thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video i hope that you enjoyed the video here on my channel i'm gonna be talking about small business stuff um i'm a student pilot so i'll talk about that and also some lifestyle things as um we get comfortable in our new home so if that sounds interesting to you and it's something that you would like to see please subscribe and i would love to have you here and i'll leave some links below to my vlog and then also to my socials if you want to follow me my link to my small business if you love candles i'm your girl and um i'll just see you in the next one so bye